This is the Panama Canal, and it is quietly collapsing. You see, for over a century, it has been the global equivalent of a cheat code in Age of Empires. Instead of spending days, weeks, or months sailing around South America's bottom, something only penguins, Chilean fishermen, or drug cartels actually enjoyed, you just cut through this 50-mile ditch and boom, Atlantic to Pacific Ocean in eight hours. Just eight hours, that's less time than it takes to get through the TSA at JFK Airport. Now, the Panama Canal, it's one of the wonders of the world, and it's in deep trouble right now. And it's not just from one issue, it's a litany of things all bombarding it at once. You see, the Panama Canal, it was heralded in 1914 as the engineering miracle of the century. A canal that cost $375 million, which in today's money is around $11 billion, and more disturbingly, it also cost around 25,000 lives. That's right, 25,000 people died digging the canal which makes it both one of the world's greatest engineering feats and also one of the deadliest group projects ever attempted. Beating out both the pyramids and that one semester where you got stuck with the guy who thought Excel was a little bit too corporate. Now, the US ran the canal until 1999 when it was handed over to Panama under the Torrijos-Carter Treaties. And for decades, it was a money machine. About 38 ships a day used it, carrying nearly 6% of global maritime trade. The toll fees, they've been staggering. Some ships pay over $500,000 to cross the canal once, which means the Panama Canal Authority is basically the world's most passive aggressive toll booth. Imagine Easy Pass, but instead of $1.50, it's half a million dollars. And instead of some guy in a Prius, it's a 1,200 foot long container ship full of rubber ducks headed to Walmart. But here's where things get a little bit messy. The canal designed for ships of the 20th century is dealing with ships that look like they've been taking steroids and HGH since the late 80s. The original locks on the canal were built for ships called Panamax, which sounds like a diet pill, but actually means a vessel no wider than 106 feet. But then, shipping companies, in their eternal quest to make every boat look like an overstuffed Costco, invented post Panama Max, and then Neo Panama Max. These monsters are 1,200 foot long, 160 foot wide, giant gargantuan creatures. To handle them, Panama spent $5.25 billion on a new set of shiny locks in 2016, a project that was supposed to future-proof the canal, except almost immediately, engineers noticed something slightly concerning. The locks, they were leaking. Not in the cute, oh, my faucet drips sometimes kind of way. It's more on the, oh, the giant concrete walls holding back the ocean have some cracks in them kind of way. Essentially, what happened to the Panama Canal then was like you bought a new car and realized the brakes weren't working all the time. But the expansion was hailed as a success. By 2022, over 50% of all container ships were Neo Panamax size, and the canal was making more money than ever. And Panama was thrilled because the canal contributes nearly 6% of the country's GDP. Essentially, the Panama Canal is their golden goose, or more accurately, their golden goose that occasionally leaks water, drowns the farmers upstream, and demands billions of dollars in maintenance every decade. And whenever there's a problem with the Panama Canal, it's not just a Panama problem, it's a world problem because the canal is the hinge of the world. Without it, you have chaos. In 2021, about 40% of all US container traffic from Asia went through the canal. That's billions of dollars in furniture, electronics, and sweatshop manufactured yoga pants. If the canal falters, suddenly your Amazon Prime package isn't there in two days, it arrives by mid-2031. Now, to understand how central the canal is, imagine world trade without the canal. Suddenly, the shipping industry has to go back to rounding Cape Horn at the bottom of South America, a place so deadly that sailors literally called it the sailor's graveyard. Cape Horn is basically the Dark Souls boss fight of maritime navigation. Winds so strong they snap up mass, currents so violent they flip ships, and waves that laugh in the face of modern engineering. And without the canal, shipping companies might be forced to do that again. Which means all the stuff you love, your PlayStation, your IKEA furniture, your cheaply made Wish outfits, they would cost more, arrive slower, or not arrive at all. And in this economy, people would rather go without dental care than wait four months for their flat pack Calyx bookshelf. 
Yet despite its importance, the canal is a century-old infrastructure project cracking under the weight of things like megaships, climate change, and the kind of corruption usually reserved for FIFA. This miracle shortcut is becoming a traffic jam with delusions of grandeur and the world has barely started noticing. Because right now, the Panama Canal is slowly turning from the maritime miracle into a global migraine. And like with most things in global trade, the people will suffer first aren't the billionaires shipping oil. It's you. And if there's one thing that will finally make Americans care about foreign infrastructure, it's when their DoorDash order takes more than 20 minutes. So let's start off with another one of the problems here. The Panama Canal doesn't run on gas or coal or cocaine-fueled optimism. It runs on water. Lots and lots of water. Every time a ship passes through the locks, the canal uses 52 million gallons of fresh water from Gatun Lake. 52 million gallons. That's the same amount used by the entire city of Los Angeles during a single avocado toast brunch. And here's the problem. Gatton Lake is shrinking, which means the canal, the thing literally designed to connect oceans, is being strangled by a glorified puddle. Now, Panama isn't exactly a desert. In fact, it rains there about 120 inches a year. That's 12 feet, by the way, 12 feet of rain they get a year. To put that in perspective, London gets 23 inches, not even two feet. And they complain about how rainy it is in that city. If London got Panama's rainfall, British people would have to grow gills just to keep going to pubs. But thanks to the changing climate around Panama, Panama's rain schedule has become less tropical paradise and more, my ex is texting me at 2 a.m. Completely unpredictable and extremely inconvenient for everyone. In 2023, Panama experienced its worst drought in over a century. Gatin Lake, which normally sits at around 87 feet above sea level, dropped so low, the canal authority had to reduce ship traffic. Daily transits went from 38 ships to just 22. Shippers were furious. The cost of delays skyrocketed. Some companies had to literally offload cargo, make ships lighter, and then crawl through the canal like an overweight guy squeezing into the Spirit Airlines seat. Others just gave up entirely and rerouted around Cape Horn, where again, nature is basically trying to kill you with waves the size of apartment buildings. And this was an economic gut punch. By late 2023, freight rates by some container routes jumped by 36%. Insurance costs surged, and suddenly shipping through the canal cost companies so much money that even Jeff Bezos probably thought, Jesus, I can't afford that. But I know what you're probably thinking. This sounds kind of dumb. The canal is entirely dependent on fresh water, not seawater, not desalination, not some futuristic liquid hydrogen pipeline. No, it's dependent on fresh water, which means the same reservoir that floats a 1,200 foot long container ship also provides drinking water for nearly half of Panama's population. So every time a ship goes through, the people of Panama are basically forced to share their tap water with a giant boat full of Ikea furniture. Imagine if your landlord said, sorry, you can't shower today or drink today. We needed that water to help Carnival Cruise Lines deliver another floating diarrhea factory to Miami. And this isn't just about water levels. It's about all the climate chaos. El Nino events have made Panama's rainfall more erratic, swinging between floods and droughts like the world's least fun roller coaster. In 2010, floods literally forced canal closures. In 2019, rainfall was so low the lake couldn't even supply enough water for normal lock operations. And now, what looked like giant swings looks like it's more of a permanent crisis. Too much rain one year, not nearly enough the next. It's like the canal is stuck in the world's worst Tinder relationship. Everything's either too dry or way too wet. So the Panama Canal Authority has floated ideas like building new reservoirs, digging more lakes, or inventing water recycling locks. But these projects could cost billions. They could take decades, and in the meantime, shippers are sitting in their billion dollar boats wondering why the world's most important shortcut is suddenly a BYOW situation bring your own water. And keep in mind, every single one of these delays ripples through the global economy. Coffee exports from Colombia, copper shipments from Peru, LNG cargoes heading to Europe, they all slow down when this happens. After the major slowdown in 2023, the US East Coast ports saw a 13% drop in container traffic because ships were avoiding the canal. But now here's where the geopolitics comes in. Because when the canal falters, alternatives start to look a little bit more sexy. 
China has spent years floating the idea of a Nicaragua Canal, a bigger, deeper rival project that would make the Panama Canal look like the canal ride at Disneyland. It was announced in 2013 as a $50 billion mega project with Chinese backing, but then it fizzled out when everyone realized Nicaragua was a swamp, the financing was shady, and the developer mysteriously just disappeared. Still, the ghost of that project hangs over Panama like an ex who keeps watching your Instagram stories. If the canal keeps sputtering, you bet Beijing will sniff around again. And if the Nicaragua project doesn't take off, then the Arctic might. Melting ice has opened up new routes that shave days off travel between Asia and Europe. And yes, the warming of the Earth could be catastrophic, but to shipping companies, the North Pole is starting to look like the world's weirdest rest stop. But here's where things get a little bit dicey. The two countries that own the largest Arctic shipping routes are Canada, not bad, and Russia. So we could be headed towards a future where instead of Panama skimming fees off global trade, it's Russia's Vladimir Putin cashing checks from Maersk. But maybe there's a lesson here. The canal was built to dominate nature, to carve through mountains and redirect rivers in order to serve commerce. And for a century, it worked. But now, nature is returning the favor. Less rain, more droughts, bigger ships, weaker concrete. The canal is being slowly beaten into irrelevance, and when the world's most important shortcut becomes unreliable, everyone's gonna pay for it, not just Panama. And if there's anything scarier than the Panama Canal collapsing and closing, it's the idea of explaining to a suburban mom in Target why her new air fryer costs $500 and takes three months to arrive. That's not just a supply chain crisis, that's the apocalypse. Now, if you liked this video, please check out my documentaries playlist and make sure to click on that. And when you do, I will see you guys in my next video in just a few seconds.